Hey guys, welcome back. So let's get coding because we have a fair bit to do in this lecture, right? So now we're going to enable enable our endpoint so that we can actually create a valid project task. Remember, a valid project task is one that at least has a summary attribute. And for this, and just to enforce this, we're going to use the at not blank annotation. And we're going to give it a message saying uh, summary cannot be blank. You guys can give it whatever message you guys want, but this is what I'm going to give it. And I'm just going to enforce this one here. The other ones I'm just going to leave alone. All right. And actually I do have plans for the status here. So that's why I'm not touching that one. All right. So now, as I mentioned, let's start uh, enabling things so that we can persist our, our first project task. Now, I don't want <clears throat> to keep going without suggesting that you guys install Postman. Okay, Postman is a really cool tool for API development. It's going to allow us to test this on the spot without needing our React front end. And it's going to make sure that everything's nice and neat before we actually start coding our React front end. All right, so if you don't have this in place, this is a very well known tool. I'd be very surprised if some of you don't have it, but if you don't, no worries, no worries. Just go and Google Postman and just go to their website and install this real quick and then come back when you have once you have done this. All right. So I'm just going to put this away for a second because we're going to use it very, very soon. All right. So we're going to start working on the happy path. And the first thing that I'm going to wire up here is our service. Now, what we're going to do in our service is that we're going to create a method that's going to allow us to save or update our project tasks. And this is obviously going to uh, call the project task repository so we can save it. All right, so what we're going to type here is public, excuse me, project task, and then we're going to say save <coughs> or update project task. All right, and then we're going to pass it a project task, a valid project task, if everything goes well. Now, um, here we're just going to return a project task repository that save, which is a method that comes out of the box with the CRUD repository that we're extending on the project task interface. And then we're going to just kind of pass it the project task. Now let's take a harder look at our project task object. As I mentioned before, this cannot be blank. And if it's blank, it's probably going to throw an error. And then of course, uh, the status, the status actually drives where the project task is in the board that I demoed to you in the first lecture. So for this, we're just going to do something a little quick in which we're just going to say if before persisting, if the project task dot get status, if this is null, meaning uh, we don't even have the attribute in the API call, or if project task dot get status is blank, then what we're going to do is we're just going to set it and that's all we're going to do. Okay. So we're going to say project task set status and we're just going to set it to, to do to underscore do. All right. This is the only thing that we're going to do here for now, just so that if the user doesn't select a uh, status and just goes straight into it to do. All right. So with this in place, then we're going to start wiring our happy path in the controller. And again, this is the happy path. We're not yet testing for what should happen if we don't pass it a valid uh, project task object. Okay. So here uh, we're going to say post mapping. We're going to use the post mapping annotation. And then we're just going to do double quote here. Uh, and what this is implying is that we can use the same route to post or create a new project task. Okay. Then we're going to say public response entity. And we're going to say response entity of type generic. And then we're going to call it at project task to board, right? This is the name I'm giving it. You guys can give it whatever name you want. Okay. And before we start working on validation or anything, let's just do the happy path, as I mentioned. So we're going to do add request body. Okay. Very important because we are, what we're passing to this API is a request body of type project task. Okay. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to say project task 
new PT or new project task equals project task service and then we're gonna use the save and update project task method and then we're gonna pass it that project task alright and then what we're gonna do then is return new response entity of type project task and then we're gonna obviously return the new PT or project task with an HTTP status of created alright so with this in place we're going to restart our server and I'm gonna get you folks to open two things you guys are gonna open postman and then you guys are gonna go and open your h2 console which is basically right here at h2 at localhost 8080 if you're using this port the default port if not whatever port you guys want to use h2 console all right forget about this you know if you guys just do this it's gonna take you right there right we're gonna go to connect and I'm just gonna show you guys that I do not have anything on my database as of right now and remember this is an in-memory database for you guys for those of you that are new to this so every time you restart the server everything that was there is gonna go away and then you guys are gonna have to uh, pretty much quote unquote re in remember you don't need a password here or at least I've never used a password here so you just connect here click on the table run and then it gives you the query right so now we're go just gonna go to postman if I can find my postman here <laughs> and any postman uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna post a new project task now for this we're gonna use obviously the post method here or the post operation and then we're gonna say localhost slash API slash board if you don't remember where this comes from it's right here API board and remember we're not doing anything anything specific for creating a new project task all right so then we're gonna go, go here here to body and forget about this thing don't worry about that one um, remember when you go oh guys sorry for the for the background noise I've said it before and I'll say it again I have some neighbors that think they live in a fast and the furious movie and they're always speeding in a quiet neighborhood like this my apologies anyway um, so basically what we're doing here is we're gonna send a request body of type project task all right so uh, for this you guys need to come here to body make sure that you click raw and make sure that this is set to application JSON not text because this is the first option that's gonna give you you need to make sure that this is an application JSON or else this is not going to work all right very important so again we're gonna pass it the required field of summary and then we're gonna pass it the acceptance criteria and we're gonna leave the status in blank so to make sure that uh, that little logic that we put in the service works all right with that in place we're gonna click send and this is going to create our first project task and this is really neat we have the ID of one then we have the summary of new project task we have the acceptance criteria and then we have the status set uh, to to do out of the box all right and if you guys don't believe me that this worked then what we're gonna do is go to our database run that query again and this works great all right this is perfect now let's move forward what happens if we do not give this thing the required field that it's expecting well what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have a horrible server error 500 internal server error this does not look good all right so the way around this is as follows all right so what we're going to do here is the first thing is that we're going to use the add value annotation this add value annotation is pretty much that you're t you're saying here that what you're passing to this endpoint is actually a valid request body of type project task all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to refresh the server and remember this is going to get rid of everything that we had in our database we're gonna wait for the server to start and now when we try and send when we try and send bad data again now we get a, a more descriptive message and this is way better and as you can see here you can see you, if you scroll down this is a, an object on, it, on its own it's a field error and it says that the field is summary and the default message is summary cannot be blank now this should give you a really good hint on what to do here basically you know that the field in question is summary and the default message is this one here which is what we put in our in our object right here 
all right so this means that we should be able to tap into the list of field errors and we should be able to use the getters and setters in this object to actually retrieve this and perhaps use that key value pair pair to perhaps create a better better message than this like we need something better we need something that it's more say compressed because there's a lot of information here that we, that we do not need and we only need we only need this to say the summary is missing that's all we need all right so for this we're going to do the following we're going to go back to the controller and as i mentioned before let me make some room here for you folks because if not you guys are not going to be able to see we have the add valid uh, annotation here and then we're going to use another interface called binary result binary result is as i mentioned it's an interface and this basically helps us get the results of the validation all right basically and very 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 um to the point here the binary result has a method called has errors all right and all this this does is evaluates whether or not we're passing a valid project task object all right so if it if it if it has errors that means that we're going to have a list of errors within this response which we already saw that we do have and let me just go back to Postman real quick to show that again, just so that this all makes sense, this all clicks, right? We do have a, a list of errors. If we have more attributes that are required here, then we'll have obviously more errors here, right? Cool. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that means that we can also say result dot get field errors, right? And as you can see here, result dot get field errors gives us a list of type field error. This means that we can iterate through here and perhaps even extract what we want. What we want is for this error to be minimized or compressed to just say summary and the default message. That's all we want in this JSON response. All right, so what we're going to do now is since we want a key value pair using the getters in that object, then the data structure that we're gonna use is the map. And if we're gonna use a map of string and string all right and we're gonna call it error map okay and this is gonna be instantiated as new hash map perfect all right so what we're gonna say what we're gonna do now is we use the for each the, the for each to do the following remember this list and I just want to go back to to this so that you guys have complete context of what it is that I'm doing this list right here is of type field error very important right because what we're going to want to extract is each one of the few errors that we're getting out of the validation uh, say process okay so what we're going to do is that we're going to extract the error of type field error fail field error error mm -hmm. and we're going to get this from the result dot get field errors perfect all right and what we're going to say then is that we're going to grab the error map if there are field errors obviously and we're going to say put right so that we can actually load our error map and then we're going to say error get field all right and again back to postman get field and then we're also going to load the message and again this is going to build that key value pair that we need and then get default message remember we want only this here and we only want this here all right i hope that makes sense and then if there are errors obviously we want to return a new response entity of type map string string so we can literally copy and paste this just so we don't have to type so so much and move a little faster and then what we're going to return is that error map here and then we're going to obviously return uh, an HTTP status of bat request right perfect all right now that we have this in place what we're going to do now is we're going to restart our server and then we're gonna we're gonna try this we're gonna try getting away with this stunt again and then we're gonna make sure that everything actually works remember not always when you guys are putting any source of validation make sure that the positive also works as well right you don't want to run into any any troubles by getting too too cocky all right now if we run this again trying to pass the bad data 
Perfect. The summary cannot be blank. And if we pass the summary again, then this gets gets created, no problem. And now I'm gonna go to my H2 database. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna be perfect. So we're gonna put our H2 database here. I'm gonna run the query in our table, and there it is. There's a project task that we just created. New project task, new project task, create project board, everything makes sense and the status is to do perfect so we have this we have uh, completed our create operation and then in the next video we're going to start working on reading thank you very much